Hello and welcome to Chapter 10, the Summary Worksheet from Stevens' Introduction to Statistics, the Think and Do Book. And this Summary Worksheet is in the form of one big problem with a lot of parts to it. And it should be pointed out that all of the answers as seen here in this instructor's version is also available at the back of the student version book. So you should have these answers whether you're a um, student or a teacher. Okay, so we start off with um, some advertising versus sales data, right? So we, we have here, um, how many months is this? Ten months? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight months. So we have eight months worth of data. I'm not in any particular order here. And on this month, 22000 was spent on advertising and 380000 was made in sales. Right, so that looks like it's uh, this one here, perhaps. In any case, I don't know. I think it's that one. But if you do a scatter plot for all of these data points, you get this right here. Right. So what you can see is that there's a positive correlation between advertising expenses and sales. So that looks good. If you're in the marketing department, you can justify the money you spend on advertising. And if you get the correlation coefficient for these points, you get a correlation of 0.94. And for eight data values, let's just check real quick. For eight, we have to beat 0 0.707. So that is indeed a significant linear correlation. So we're looking good. And here is the regression equation. All right. So that's the equation for that line. All right, so and I go through here and ask a, ask a whole lot of questions, right? Is the linear correlation significant? And um, actually, we just did that. We did um, yes, because the correlation coefficient of 0.94 is larger than the critical value in the back of the book of 0 0.707. So that is an affirmative. Um, is there anything suspicious here? Well, if you look at this data without the line, try to ignore the line. It may not be following a linear pattern. It may be just a little bit, you know, you can almost run a curve through there that might fit it better. So that's that's my only concern at this point. But it's not too far off from linear. And again, the correlation coefficient is certainly significant enough. Um, so I'm a little worried, but not, not too worried. What percentage of the variation sales can be explained by the linear relation to advertising. Again, that's the explained variation that is found by taking the value of R and squaring it. So if you take 0.94, which is R, and square it, you'll get the 0.8836 that is right here. All right. So about 88% of the variation in sales can be explained by the linear relationship to advertising. And if you're in the advertising department, you might even want to imply a little cause and cause and effect in there by saying something like 88% of the variation in sales is caused by um, the variation in advertising. You know, you can push a little bit, um, but that mathematically is not correct. We just have to talk about variation and explain by linear relationship. Okay, so 88%. So that looks good for you in the marketing department. We want to sketch... Um, an approximation to the least squares line. Oh, sorry, this was the solution. So in your ver in your book, there is no line here. So you just, as long as it's sort of ballpark, the, the, the line that some people draw that is maybe not, you know, sometimes they'll, they'll go like this, you know, half the points are above, half the points are below, but you're not going through the data very well. So what you want to do, maybe go through, and if you look at this, we have one, two, three points below the line, one, two, three points above the line, and a couple points on the line. So you want to sort of split the difference. And if you drew yours by hand, if it doesn't look exactly like this, um, you just want, you want it to sort of look close to this as possible. But you're just ballparking it. Um, one thing that can help you ballpark it, though, if you see this regression equation, see this 107, your line should end up down around 107 if you project it to the x equals 0. 
So that sort of helps you out a little bit. And then you can actually plot a point or two if you want. So, you know, maybe let x equal 10 and see where you are, and that would give you this point. Then you connect the dots. But I wasn't really looking for something that specific. I'm more looking for just a ballpark. How much in sales would you expect if you spent 20000 in advertising? Well, we can ballpark it from here. So if we had spent 20000 in advertising, we would expect, looks like somewhere around 375000 in um, sales. But uh, I'm actually, since we have the regression equation, I'm not looking for a ballpark answer. I'm looking for an exact estimate. So we're going to take 20. Oh, and by the way, when I, when I say 20,000 in advertising, that means x equals 20, right? Because x is given in terms of thousands. So when you put 20 in to the regression equation right there, you get 373. So you'd expect about $373,000 in sales if you spent 20,000 on advertising, right? And that makes sense. That's basically what we were looking at up here. All right, from our graph. Okay. How much in sales would you expect to um, get if you spent 30000 on advertising? So if you look over here, it's harder to tell. 30, looks like that line would continue, you know, up like that. You might be up around 500000 But again, I'm not looking for, for a ballpark answer. I want you to actually stick... Uh, 30,000 or 30 in for x into the regression equation, and you get 506. So you'd expect about $506,000 in sales if you spend $30,000 in advertising. Is this a risky prediction? It sure is, because if you look, you've never been out. There's no data points. You know, the regression line is way out here by itself. You've never spent anywhere in that ballpark before. So you don't know if this regression equation is even valid in that area. So it is risky indeed. Um, okay, what does the slope of the regression equation represent? So the slope is 13.3, right? So what that means, let's go back to our graph. What that means is if you increase advertising by one unit or 1,000, you can expect 13.3 thousand increased in sales, right? So that's what this says here. Every thousand dollars you spend on advertising, you can expect an increase of 13.3 thousand in sales. What does the y-intercept represent? Well, it's 107. So basically what that says is if you spend no money on advertising, you can still expect about 107000 in sales. And that's somewhat meaningful. Um, meaningful. Uh, the only problem is that, again, we've never spent anywhere down near zero before, so we're not totally certain that this line is even valid at that in that area. But we've been close, and we're really just using it as sort of a, a lower limit. So we can expect about 100000 in sales even when you spend, um, you know, close to nothing in, in advertising. Um, what is the natural choice for the causative, vari causative in response? It certainly makes sense that the dollar spent on advertising would, would be the causative and then the total sales would be the response. But on the other hand, if sales are doing well and you're making a lot of money, what would you do with those profits? There's a very good chance that you'd spend a lot of those profits on advertising or marketing. So it's quite possible that the higher sales is is feeding back into it and causing the marketing to go up. So so the cause and effect relationship might be harder to ascertain than is uh, initially thought here. Can we say that an increase in advertising expenditures causes an increase in sales? No. Remember, correlation does not um, prove cause and effect. And especially in this situation where the causative relationship can come back on, you can sort of have a feedback. You know, more, more sales could cause increased advertising. Plus, there's things like the time lag, um, things like that. So... So we certainly can't jump to the conclusion that increase in advertising will cause sales to increase. You might try to make that argument if you're in the marketing department, 
but from a mathematical perspective, um, not a good idea. All right, so you go back to, uh, where is that one with the big $507,000? Right here, number five. If you look at number five, we said, all right, how much in sales would you expect if you spent 30000 in advertising? We said this was risky because it's outside of any dollar value we've spent in advertising in the past. But the prediction was 506000 So your boss finds that uh, very tempting. And so uh, you talk him or her into letting you spend 30000 in advertising, including a little bit extra for yourself, right? So that's on month nine. You spend 30000 on advertising. And the sales on that particular month month are four hundred thousand and ten dollars all right so you're expecting five hundred and six thousand dollars all right you got four hundred thousand and ten place the the new point on the scatter plot and i did that right here there's the thirty thousand so that isn't nearly up where we wanted it to be all right we were expecting it up here our old line went like this all right so that's, uh, that didn't work out. That's bad. <laughs> uh, is this data point an outlier? It's hard to say. There might be a time lag. Maybe there's a nonlinear relationship. I mean, if you look at this, with this particular point, suddenly this nonlinear relationship seems to make more sense, right? What we're hitting is what's known as diminishing returns, right? Where you're... Um, marginal benefit from additional expenditures in advertising gets closer and zero closer to zero in other words the slope of this curve gets closer to zero um, all right what happens to R well suddenly the data fits doesn't fit a line as well so it's going to get smaller I don't know how much smaller because the data is still somewhat linear um, I ran the I actually ran the numbers on these and and it was smaller, not much smaller, but a little smaller. But the, um, you know, the, the relationship is less linear, so the value of R got got worse, or got smaller. What happens to the regression line? Well, the regression line used to look like this. What's going to happen is it's going to get dragged down towards that point somehow or another. More than likely, and here's the actual regression line from software, the one that's in black here. So it sort of got rotated down. Um, but in any case, this point pulled the regression line closer to it. Um, what happened? I didn't get, I didn't get what I thought. Um, and there's all sorts of things that, that, that could have happened. But my suspicion in this situation is that the original relationship was actually not linear. And this is actually known in economics, you know, the law of diminishing returns. You can spend, spend, you get more. Spend on advertising, you get a lot from it, and you get a little less as you spend more and more and more. Then it kind of flattens out. Right? So diminishing returns. The non, this nonlinear relationship and diminishing returns is the same thing. There also could be a time lag issue going on. Maybe if you wait another month, that, that 30000 will kick in in advertising, and you'll get a, a bigger bump the following month. What... What argument can you make to save your job? I've seen this in marketing classes. Market share retention. You did not lose any share. You may have spent more on advertising, but you retained your market share. Nothing, nothing went down. So if you can spend staying the same as good, then uh, you might save your job. <laughs> Even though you spent more, you didn't lose any. Had you... Had that 30000 resulted in actually fewer dollars in sales, then you'd have a real problem uh, saving yourself. But since you retained your market share, I guess it wasn't all that bad. A marketing, marketing major gave me that answer. Um, okay, so that wraps up Chapter 10, Regression and Correlation. We have one more chapter to do. That's Chapter 11. But we are done for now for Chapter 10. See you in chapter 11. Bye.